Um, so today we're going to be doing producing lecture part one, and then uh, later we'll be producing uh, lecture part two, just because this one's really big. Um, I'm really excited because I was a producer. Um, I love producing. I think it's really fun. But even if you don't want to be a producer, it's still really important for you to understand what the producer does, um, particularly because you need to know how to read a rundown. Um, so that's a lot for broadcast news. We're focusing on, on the news side of it. But even if you end up working for um, any other TV um, station, if you're doing any kind of live production, uh, rundowns are what you use so that everybody's on the same page. Um, so it is important for you to understand basically how rundowns work. Um, and if you do want to be a producer, I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to be a really good producer. Um, but first, I kind of want to go back really quickly and just do a quick refresher on uh, this lecture that we had. Remember the TV newsroom jobs lecture to kind of remind you how this, how their day gets started. And then we'll kind of go back over to the producing side and show you now they're sitting down to do a rundown. How does that look? So just a reminder, um, every producer's day starts with an editorial meeting. So depending on what day part you're working, if you're doing the day side, that's generally the largest editorial meeting. Um, so you'll start at like 9 a.m., for example, with the reporters, the anchors, um, the assignment editors, uh, the all the producers uh, for that day part, and then like executive producer and maybe some of the other managers, like assistant news directors and news directors. And the assignment editor will say, hey, here are all the things that are happening that day. That's also written in EMPS. Um, so the producers have that to access, like, what the stories are that they're covering that day. And then the reporters will go and pitch the stories that they want to cover. Um, usually the executive producer, one of the managers, will say, okay, you're allowed to do that story that you pitched, or no, you're going to do a different story. Um, and then the producers will go around and pick. Like, I want Rod to do a package for me at 5, and then I want Chip to do a VOSOP for me, then I want Steve to do a whip and a stand-up tease, or whatever it is that the producer wants. Um, they'll all write those things down, and then the producer goes back to their desk and starts their day. Um, so, so that everybody knows what's, what they're doing, they put everything inside of a rundown. So usually if you're a reporter, you want to check with your producer, look at the rundown, and see what's expected of you in any of the shows. And usually if you're a reporter, you're going to be working in several of the shows that day. Um, so maybe you're doing... A package for four, then you're going to do a whip for five, then you'll write a VOSAT vote for the six o'clock show, then you'll do a VO for seven or something like that. Um, so it's really important to know what the producer wants so that you're not always asking them. You need to be able to read the rundown and know what's expected of you. Same thing if you're editing a show, you need to be able to read the rundown. Definitely if you're directing. Directors are really focused on the rundown. Their whole day is, um, is deep inside of the rundown. Um, especially if you're coding it for the Ignite system that we, we talked about also in this past newsroom job lecture. If you need a refresher, please go back and watch those videos so that you understand how everybody's job kind of ties together. Um, but today's focus is really going to be on producing. Um, so before we look at a rundown, I kind of want to give you an idea of um, the most important things that you need to do if you want to be a really good producer. So a great producer, first and foremost, always ask themselves, the same question about every story, who cares? Who cares? Why are you picking the story for the show? Um, that's really important. Sometimes you have to do a story whether you care about it or not because you have bosses and that's what they want. And then you just sometimes you just have to do a story because that's what they want you to cover. Um, and I encourage you to you know talk back to your managers and say, no, I, I would rather do this one or whatever. There should be a discussion there. Um, but at the end of the day, most of the stories that the producers choose should be something that they really think people care about. Um, a great producer also can quickly sift through like hundreds of headlines and videos every single day and then pick the ones that matter to viewers. So you really need to be good at skimming. Um, you really, really need to be good at just frantically looking through as many sources as you can um, to pick the ones that are important and you need to be able to spot those right away so that you save time so that you can invest that time in really producing um, the newscast. So um, what's important now when you're picking what matters to the viewers is that it doesn't mean that every single story is profound. You really need to have good balance. So good producers have a really good balance of emotion in their newscasts. Um, not apathy. That's like the opposite of what you're going for. You want people to feel something, but you don't only want them to feel terrified that 
horrible breaking news is happening the entire time. You want to give some kind of balance. Hopefully you have a spot for some consumer news. Hopefully you have a spot for some entertainment news. Hopefully you have some sports news. You have some kickers. You have some balance there. That way it's not just um, gloom and doom the entire time. You don't want your audience to just be desensitized or to be like, no, I can't take it anymore. I'm not watching because that defeats the purpose, right? So um, you do want to produce a show that that takes people on this emotional um, tour with you without making them feel like they're on a roller coaster. Um, you don't want to go on a really horrible crime story and then something happy and then something sad and then something happy because um, that's just a little erratic. So that's important. Um, also, a great producer understands their audience demographics and adjust their story choice and the writing style accordingly. So for example, um, I produce a lot of different shows. If I was producing a Sunday night show um, that was coming out of sports, my audience just finished watching sports. So I'm going to really pay attention to those stories that they would care about. Where, as opposed to like if I'm producing a 4 p.m. show and my audience just finished watching Ellen, I'm gonna pick very different topics uh, very different stories. The way I'm going to write it is different. The, the stories that I'm going to pick for my open are different because I'm trying to draw in my lead in audience. So you need to understand the difference between your viewers um, so that you can really target them and get them to be interested in what you're what you're including in your show. Um, so this is just one of the pictures that I, I put in the last lecture to kind of give you an idea of what um, a producer pod looks like. Usually the producers are all sitting kind of together and they're talking to each other about, hey, did you see the story? That's really good for your show. Um, like you take that, but I'd like this other story because you don't want to repeat the stories either. So the producers have to work together a lot to make sure that they're not repeating the same information. Or if there's a big story that they have across every show, you want to make sure to update each other and say, hey, did you hear about this update? Um, or make sure that you have consistent branding. Um, the basics of stacking a rundown is understanding blocks. Um, we're going to take a look at some of these here in a second, but I want to kind of give you an idea of some of these key words, um, some of the vocabulary that they use, um, because this is going to be really important. If you're interning, you want to know what they're saying. When you get a job there, you really want to know uh, what this means so that you can communicate efficiently. So newscasts are separated by blocks. Um, the first segment of the show, that's called the A block. Um, then the second segment is called the B block. Then th the th third segment is called the C block. And depending on how long your show is will depend on how many blocks you have. Um, some half hour shows have three blocks. Some half hour shows have five blocks. Um, sometimes that depends on the advertisement, um, like how many ads they're selling. Um, and I'll, I'll show you um, more examples of that later on once we kind of show you what it looks like in newscasts. Um, and that's kind of, that's what's called a show wheel. So every station has different show wheels for each show, and that basically separates out how many minutes of commercial breaks are you going to have, how many minutes of A block, how many minutes of B block, how many minutes of C block, approximately. Um, that's, that usually depends on how many commercial minutes the advertising department can sell or the sales department. Um, the important thing to know, though, is before you go into um, your show, if you're starting at a new station, um, you need to understand that, that most blocks in live newscasts fluctuate slightly depending on uh, the content. So if you have a lot of A block stories, maybe your A block's really long that day, and maybe your B block is shorter, um, but other stations have hard times. So that's important. If You need to know if your um, segments are hard, which means that every single day your A block is going to be 10 minutes exactly, uh, for example. And that's usually because they'll re-rack things, they'll cut your segment out and they'll put it in another show. Um, that usually happens in morning shows. If you have really long morning shows, maybe you'll repeat a couple or re-rack a couple segments. Um, that's when you would use um, hard times. Um, producers create template rundowns so that every day when you come into work, you don't have to rebuild a rundown from scratch. Um, and usually that means that you know how many minutes are in every single break. And that usually doesn't change, but you always want to check the log to see if um, the sales department sold extra advertising that day, um, because that'll change the overall time that you have in your newscast. So the producers basically get what's left, which is called the news hole. So, um, so those template rundowns are really helpful. Um, they help um, a producer stack their rundowns. And the word stacking basically means the order in which you put the stories, that kind of has a negative connotation because it insinuates that 
that you'll just kind of throw them in there in a different order. But really what you want to do if you're going to be a producer is you want to really produce into and out of your stories. You want to build those stingers and the boxes and the breakout stories. You really want to produce. You don't just want to stack. But that is the technical term of what it's called when you are putting the stories in the rundown. It's called stacking the rundown. Um, and we're going to take a look at some rundowns in just a second. And I want to explain to you a couple of quick things before we look at them so that you understand what you're seeing. So in EMPS, which is the content management system we're going to look at as an example, um, iNews is, a, is another competing content management system. They're very similar. They're not exactly the same, but they are very, very close. Um, so you do need to know, depending on what station you go to, how to use iNews and EMPS. I've been at stations that used like both. So some the stations I started at use iNews, and then recently I've been working in EMPS, which is why we're going to use that as an example here, because I screen grab a lot of those for my own shows so that you can see what the rundown really looks like. Um, and in, in EMPS, when the lines are uh, red, that basically just means that the producer floated the story. So if I'm producing the show and I'm saying, hey, I'm floating A35, that means I'm skipping that story. So that's important because the content management system, when you float a story, that not only eliminates the script from the teleprompter, so if the story is coming up next, I can delete it immediately so that it doesn't show in the teleprompter. Um, but it also removes the lower thirds that I've added. It removes any of the coding that the directors have put in Ignite that would tell the system, Rod is coming up, that's his story, so open Rod's microphone. It basically eliminates all that and it skips to the next one. So floating doesn't delete it. It's still sitting there, but it basically removes all of the information from the show. And I'm going to show you guys here why you need to know how to float stories. Um, a couple of the examples we're going to look at for why a producer chooses to float a story. Um, the biggest one is to cut time. So when a show is heavy or over, those are two other keywords that you're going to need to know. If a show is heavy, that means there's just too much content in it and I'm not going to get to my out time. Uh, with all these stories in it. So I need to float a story so that we get out on time. Um, so that that's usually happening when I, I may have written too many stories that day. Um, or when the anchors, the reporters, or the meteorologist, if they ad-lib too long, then you go over and you need to float a story. Um, you try to get as many stories in your newscast as possible because usually, depending on where you work, but most of the time, uh, the producer's story count is really important. So I've worked at places where they track how many stories you write in your newscast every single day, and that's tied to your promotion, um, or if you get to keep your job or not, because they really want high story counts. Um, for most traditional um, newscasts. Um, another reason is um, that another program leading into your show goes long. So for example, if I'm producing the 6 p.m. show on Saturday and golf is running really long and my show doesn't start until 6.07, I need to float seven minutes of my newscast if I have to get out at 6.30. So that's important to know what that means. Um, another thing here to notice here is um, You'll see lines in red that are floated because they're actually backups in the rundown. And we're going to look at some examples of how you can really help yourself out. If you're going to be a beginner reporter, please take this advice. Prepare backup scripts, float them, and so they're ready to go so that if something goes wrong and something will always go wrong, um, then you can unfloat it and you're saved. So I'll show you how to create those templates, those backups, um, and keep them floated so that, that if there's an emergency, like all of a sudden your live shot dies. You don't even know what happened. It just the signal drops. Your live shot's gone. Let's say it was the beginning of the live shot and you had two minutes planned there. Now you're light two minutes and you need to now add two minutes of show. Um, so fortunately, if you've prepared those backup stories, you can unfloat them and now you're back on time. Um, or like a reporter not making it to the scene. Um, there's all sorts of reasons. Maybe your reporter gets called off to go to breaking news, but they don't get there in time. There's lots of reasons why you're going to want backups. And we'll take a couple of uh, looks at some examples here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to look at is a very traditional A block. Um, I'm going to kind of make my um, windows a little smaller so you can kind of follow along. So follow along with the rundown here. This is the rundown. 
that cr that just for the A block, we're only going to start with the A block, and then we'll get we're going to get into bigger and more complex shows, ending with the election show, which is one of the most complex shows that producers can create. Um, and this is the video that goes along with it. I'm just opening it in another monitor so that you can watch the the um, newscast as the, at the same time as we can look at the rundown. Um, so we're going to start. Uh, right now in this one, it, it starts at A3. It's not really a big deal. It really depends on what people stack up above. Uh, but this is going to be my first first page in my A block. So usually producers will freeze their rundowns, which means that all the stories that are in the show, we're going to freeze them right now so that they can all be named something. Like my open, which is going to be 50 seconds long, is going to be um, on A3. So if after I freeze my rundown, I have to add some information, I'm going to do what I did right here, which means A6.1, A6.2. The reason you have to freeze your rundowns is because you print scripts and you print rundowns because sometimes computers fail, teleprompters fail, so you always want a printed copy. So if the floor director has a printed copy of the rundown and your uh, reporter or your, excuse me, your anchors have your scripts there with the page numbers on them, if something changes, you don't want to change all of the page numbers because you're, the producer is going to refer to those page numbers and that's the only way the, the producer should be talking to people. You're not going to say, the, mom's, the mom kids hit package is dead. No, that's too many words. You're going to say A13 is dead. And dead means you're floating it. So you talk in page numbers as a producer once you start the live show. Um, so that's why you'll see here already. Um, I kind of wanted to show you a couple of um, instances that are pretty common, but this is why it says A A6.1, because I had to add it, because it was breaking news, and the breaking news happened um, after I froze my show. And usually you freeze your show like a half hour before the newscast starts so that people can print everything. Um, so let's take a look at this and follow along um, so that you understand what we're going to see. So already we know we're going to see it open. It's a pre-produced open because it's a package. Um, and we're going to see uh, that up for about 50 seconds here. And then we're going to come out to a two plus spam, which means two of my anchors are going to be standing at the big ass monitor. Um, and they're going to talk for a few seconds just saying hello. This red line here is a backup open. This is just a five second open in case my pre-produced open doesn't get edited in time. That way I can float my open and I can go straight out to my easy open, which is just floated just in case because you never know. So I always have backups in there. So that's why this is floated. This is floated because it's a backup. It's just always going to live in my rundown just in case. That'll, that way, they don't come out to an open that's like all pre-produced, well, like what we're going to see. It'll just be a stinger that says, you know, welcome to News Channel 8 or whatever. Um, does that make sense for you guys? Okay, cool. So let's watch this, um, and, uh, and then we'll stop here along the way to point out different elements of it. Right now, I'm right there. Okay, I'm Quick pop quiz. What were we just listening to? Right. It was a nap pop, which was a SOT. And now the announcer's reading over it, so it's a VO. So it's a SOT VO. So we have a SOT VO in our open. Detected. Positive information to hide all of them. I'm accused of impersonating him. What's that? A VO. So now we're watching a VO inside of the open still. We're still um, showing the stories that are about to happen. So what was that? Right, a so another sot VO. So it's a nap pop of a song followed by VO from the announcer. Mike's going to need his suit and tie when he heads to court. Hashtag free Randy is trending. Why the singer is suing her record label. So what was that? A Satvo. So how many elements did I put in my open? I produced a large open. <laughs> There's a Satvo, followed by a VO, followed by another Satvo, followed by a Satvo. That's kind of large. I like being like big when I produce my opens. 
So that may not be extremely normal, but I think you should pre-produce your opens like this because I think it's more fun. And the real reason that I put all these extra pop culture references is because my lead in audience is, um, was Steve Harvey. And that's a fun pop culture-y type of show. So I wanted to make sure that I captured those people who aren't, don't just want to hear about breaking news. They don't just want to hear about the hard news. You're going to tell them the hard news at the top of your A block, but you want to let them know, hey, there's a reason to stick around if you also want entertainment news. Okay, so this is our open. Okay, so what page are we on now? We have two anchors standing next to a BAM. What page are we on? A4. Right, we're on page A4 now. What's this called? Stinger. Uh, now we're going to make stingers even more complicated. There are two types of stingers. Uh, this is a stinger, and if you look in your video notes, on this is A6.1. This is page A6.1. This stinger is a VO because you can hear my anchor, Josh Benson, reading under it for five seconds. So you can hear his voice. You could also have a singer that only has that noise, that da -na -na -na, that sound that you heard. It could just be that sound as a sot, which is just that by itself with no, no um, anchors reading underneath it. But in this case, I told the director, no, I want Josh to read. Uh, we have breaking news. Okay, so what page are we on now? Right, A6.2. Um, and this is a live eagle shot. So the, we call the helicopter the Eagle 8. So that's why it says eagle. But it's a live helicopter shot. Um, and if you look at my anchor um, part of my rundown, it's B for Benson, because both of my anchors' names are with a J. So instead, we just use their last name. So sometimes your rundowns are going to have first and last initials. Sometimes it'll go by the first. Sometimes it'll go by the last, just depending on what show you're doing and depending on where you work. But it's the same principle. It's an initial of the anchor who's reading it. So Josh Benson read the stinger. Now he's reading the breaking news. Um, how long is this breaking news script? 11 seconds, right. So I want to explain real quick before we move on the difference between estimated duration and actual duration. So there's two columns there. When a producer is writing the rundown, they are going to go into the estimated duration and put the time that they think the story is going to be. Because you want to be able to time out your show before everything's done. So I estimated that my stinger is going to take five seconds and that my um, breaking news script was going to take 11 seconds. Um, and it was almost exactly there. So what really happened in the actual duration, the actual time, that's EMPS reading the words in your script. Remember how I told you that every person who's uh, reading has a read rate? All of your anchors have read rates. So if you write a VO that's 15 seconds long, it's reading that it's 15 seconds long. That's the, that's the actual duration. Those are all the words that they count up. Um, the estimated duration is what I think it's going to be. Um, and, and in this case, it actually, my estimated was like 16 seconds and it ended up being 17 seconds. So that's not bad, but that's the difference between those. Um, sometimes if you know, there's going to be a lot of ad libbing, like in weather, it's, there's going to be like no time in actual time because there's no script there. It's just going to be the estimated duration. And I'll, I'll kind of explain this as we go forward so that it starts making a little bit of sense. Cause I know this is kind of a lot. Um, so right now. We're going to pick up where we left off. Josh Benson is reading A6.2. Um, and once he's done reading this breaking news script, what are we going to see after that? Yeah, we're going to see a stinger in A7. Admittedly, it was a little excessive on my part, putting two breaking news stingers back to back. Um, but whatever. Uh, so that just so you know what it was. So that coming up on A7, we're going to see another stinger, and Josh Benson is going to read that. This building is just gonna take a look for how the 
operating is where the mother and her two children are in critical conditions today. Yeah, well, all the time, that's like through the internet, you know, Kathy, when you have a vehicle at the car, and that's just about the Brookville. She was out here joining us now live at 801. What page are we on now? Actually, right now we're on A9. So we went to A8 when Jen was reading and they were standing next to the BAM, but now they're in boxes. So they call this alt boxes because it's two in two people on this monitor and one in that one. But you can call them boxes. There's double boxes, there's alt boxes. People call them kind of different things depending on where you work. Um, so this one's A9. So now we're in A9. What's going to happen after the boxes? Yeah, then we're going to have Chip Osowski live, and it's just going to be him on camera. Um, what's going to happen after that? Yeah, Chip's going to read a voiceover. What What did I hope was going to happen? And I'll explain this this year before we go any further because I haven't really explained this very much. But you notice A12 and A13 are floated. What do you think happened there? So what I what I'd hoped was going to happen is that Chip was going to go to this story and he was going to turn a package for me. But because I wasn't really sure if he was going to make it in time, I built a Vosot right above it because I was like, I don't know what you're going to get me. Maybe you're going to get me a VO. Maybe you're going to get me a SOT. Maybe you're going to give me both. Maybe you're going to give me a package. I had no clue because it was breaking news and he was running out the door. And so I was like, let me just prepare for all of those scenarios so that when it happens, it'll all be coded in Ignite. So what happened is, is just minutes before the show started, I said, Chip, what do you got? And he's like, I have a VO for you, but that's it. So I said, okay, I'm floating A12. And then that's why you see this little check mark over there in the float column. I floated A12 and then I floated A13. So now we know there's no SOT, there's no package. Does that make sense? Okay, before we watch the rest of it, I also wanna point out A17. A17, if you look at the slug is eight, which is the time of the show, BU, which stands for backup, mom, kids hit VO. So what if Chip didn't make it at all? What if Chip never made it? Then I was going to write a backup VO that my, and I had already written it. So if you look in my actual time, I wrote 30 seconds there. I wrote breaking news and I wrote the script as though Chip never showed up because he couldn't make it in time or something happened, his live shot died or something. So if Chip hadn't shown up, I would have floated A7 to A16, and then I would have just read A17, and we still would have been able to lead with the breaking news. And I had it all done ahead of time just in case. That's why all of those are read. So let's watch the rest of it and follow along. Um, Chip, what are we going to tell you in this hour? Well, then, a very sad story in the eight hours that this happened in Campbell Island at 5 o'clock this evening, as you can see behind me, Florida Highway Patrol troopers are still on the scene at this hour. Investigators tell us 26 year old William Perkins was driving southbound on a Neff Lake Road in his 2002 Jaguar. He told troopers he dropped a cigarette and became the. Did you guys notice a mistake there? Did anybody catch it? What's that? Oh, that's funny. I didn't notice that. Um, I know, that's okay. Well, there's probably lots of mistakes because that happens in breaking news. Uh, the one that I was going to point out was. Um, was the Eagle 8 bug. Check out when he goes to VO in just a second. The lower third, and this is totally my fault. This little Eagle 8 thing here, all, all the producer's fault. Um, that happened because I put the wrong lower third in there. And it was like, you know, you can look at the rundown that I was busy. Still, my bad. I messed up. Um, but you should start watching newscasts and know who made that mistake. Whose mistake was that? In, case, in this case, it was my mistake. Um, so there was something wrong because I had the Eagle 8 bug on. And obviously, it wasn't Eagle 8 footage. It was just ground footage. Not a huge deal. Yes? What was the question? I'm sorry. Uh, the light trucks. That's a great question. So you, you want your live shots to be all planned out. So normally, if it's not breaking news, Chip would have written his intro stand-up and his tag stand-up, and we would have a pretty good idea in the actual duration time how much time he was going to be talking for. But in this case, he's ad-libbing a lot, which means that if you look over here, I um, I mean, it's he wrote some stuff, actually. So, like, 
this is pretty on, pretty spot on, but usually I'll add a couple extra seconds, like just in case, because he's going to add lib extra things that he didn't write. Um, so that's part of producing is anticipating like if he didn't write everything in the script, if he didn't have time. Um, in this case, he did add, he did write some stuff, uh, which is helpful. But I, I estimated that he was going to talk for 35 seconds at the end here, which is what we're going to watch in a second. The actual duration is like uh, 22. So I gave it an extra like, you know, 10 seconds or so, which is what actually ended up happening because you know they're going to have to talk a little bit longer. Um, so you try to plan it as best you can, but generally in breaking news, you have to anticipate they're going to add in a couple extra words. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. So let's watch the rest of this um, tag here. So now we're coming back out to A14. From the Florida Highway Patrol indicates alcohol was not a factor. Obviously, this is still a developing story at this hour, and we'll have the latest on the channel and the rest. What page are we on now? A16. Good job. So remember, anytime you have breaking news, you always want to push people to your other platforms so that they can stay on top of the breaking news. Um, so because I floated A17, what's coming up next? Right. We're going to have a VO. Jen Holloway is going to read it. And it's going to be from the very top. So you don't see her face at all. It's just going to be VO. The whole thing is going to be VO. How long is the VO? 20 seconds. You're right. Um, and then you notice I added this too because the page number is A18.3. I'm a very active producer in the booth, which some directors hate. Um, others like it because it keeps them on their toes. Um, but it's also very encouraged if you're a manager. You want producers who are changing on the fly. You don't want a producer who's like committed to their rundown and not willing to change anything. You want someone who's able to think on their feet and adjust. Um, hopefully not for poor planning, but because things are coming in, there's new stories um, breaking and everything. Well, some more breaking news tonight. This one kind of blamed my mind. Right now, troopers are on the scene of a fatal crash. The one you see right here. This is on State Road 674 at Church Rock Trail. FHP tells us that two vehicles that you see here were involved. So this was a crazy day, right? So I had three breaking news stories at the very top of the show. While the other two were happening, I was adding a third breaking news story that I was writing while Chip was doing his stand-up. So the producers are very active in the show, writing while you're also talking and you're producing. Um, so we're going to watch the rest of this uh, VO here in a second. What do you think is going to happen after Jen stops talking? What's A19? A Satvo, right. Um, so Josh Benson is going to read this Satvo, and it's going to be an open. So this is how you produce into your packages. Um, you want to not just stack, you want to produce, you want to showcase. So I'm showcasing this next package with a Satvo, and it's like a mini open to my story. It's like when the cars took off running. Two people are now on their way to the hospital. We'll start to keep you posted so we get any new information. Now, Okay, what are we watching now? Right, we're watching A21, and this is a package. Um, this is a long package because it's an investigative piece. Um, so you want to really play those up. So let's watch this package, and while you're watching it, um, you know, pay attention to things like the shots that they use, the track. Mark's uh, an excellent writer. He actually used to teach at the UT for journalism. He's fantastic. Um, so pay attention to the way he writes um, and the way this package is put together, and if you can get some inspiration for this when you're working on your packages. Yeah. 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 At least not from some of the 15 victims who ripped off royally in this get rich quick investment scheme. <laughs> Do you really 
he and the sheriff's detective caught up to him last year, Fletcher acted like a fortune hunter, promising riches for anyone willing to invest in one of his sham deals. I got 10 grand fast, I'm all set for the deal. But Fletcher couldn't run fast enough to avoid our questions about his bogus schemes. Even after his fraud arrest, Fletcher kept ripping off victims through the jailhouse telephone. Listen to how he conned the mother of a fellow inmate. The righteous people are always the right. Always. Today in court, Fletcher made the second picture of his life, claiming he had gambling addiction, drove him to school from his family, his friends, and strangers alike. I am remorsefully sorry for treating him individually, as a family, as a sister, as a brother. But the judge didn't buy it and sentenced Fletcher to 25 years in prison, followed by three years probation. He'll be 112 years old by the time he's finished. And I just don't understand how I could be put that far under the brain for, for my first time defense ever. I was expecting the sentence, absolutely. But you put me in, in the, the next to somebody that's committed multiple murders. The judge told Fletcher he's free to appeal his sentencing in 30 days. And Fletcher told the judge he plans to do just that. At the Pinellas Justice Center, I'm Mark Douglas, News Channel 8. What are we looking at now? What are we watching? What's that? A look live. You are right. What kind of look like look live is this? You got the first one. <laughs> what what type of look live? So if I'm if if Mark is telling me, hey, I'm gonna do look live in my package, and I say, what kind of look live is that? It's not an intro. It's not an intro stand up. It's not a bridge stand up because the bridge is in the middle. This is a tag. So it's a tag. It's a it's at the end. So it's a look live stand up tag at the at the end of his package. And and you know it's not live, right? Because look at my rundown. Um, there's no place for a live shot here at the end. This is inside the package. You also know it's not live because there's no live bug, right? There's no bug on the on the screen here. This is his live. Uh, I really encourage you to watch Mark Douglas's packages, read his AP style stories. He's a really, really good writer. If you want to be a better writer, um, pay attention to how he writes his stories. He's very, very good at that. Um, so after he's done here, what are we going to see next? A22, you're right. Um, so Josh is going to read a clip that's going to promote the story here in a second on uh, social media, I'm, I'm sure, or the story. Hey, 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 how Willie Grants is facing new charges from one of Margo and Fairweather Police. In two separate cases, he tried all of them and ended up being on Altima with flashing lights on his dashboard. He's already been charged with doing the exact same thing several times before. Okay, so what type of story form did Jen just read? A VO, right. She had a graphic in the monitor. And then she wrote a VO for about 25 seconds. Uh, what is Josh about to do? It's about to happen. What are we about to see? Yes, that's correct. What's in the monitor? Here, let me show you. Video. Video. There's video on the monitor. So this is something I think is really underutilized in OTSs and in monitor shots. Video starting in the monitor, then take full. So you know that that's what I wanted. Because if you look at my instructions that I wrote here on A26, I wrote, I said, I want it to start with video on the monitor. Then I want to take the VO full. And in this case, I also said no lower third because there's writing on the screen. So these are all instructions so that the directors know exactly what I want to see. They would have also known if I would have accidentally put graphic mon, uh, comma VO, like what happened in the A24, they would have known there was something up because they would have said, where's the graphic MOS or the Chiron? The producer is also responsible for putting those graphics in so that they can code that for Ignite. And if they didn't see the graphic, they would have said, hey, there's a graphic missing. I'd be like, oh, my bad. I meant to tell you that it's a VO on the monitor and then take VO full. 
Um, so the producers and directors are always communicating that way. Um, and hopefully you have a really good director who can help catch mistakes because um, you know, no one's perfect. You try to be. Um, but that doesn't always happen. <laughs> so, but in this case, it, it worked out. So we're about to see um, a Vosatvo with Josh. Then we're going to see a Vosatvo for Jen. Then we're going to see two VOs. And let's just watch these here and pay attention to everything we've learned so far in the semester. Pay attention to the writing. Pay attention to the editing. Um, just watch the rest of this here, and I'll, I'll kind of stop stopping it so that you can kind of see a little bit of a flow here. Awesome. Over women in Ultima, with lives. He's already been charged with doing the exact same things several times before. After more than a year-long investigation, the Albuquerque Police Department is releasing concerning video tonight. Now, it shows retired Lieutenant Greg Grackle shooting an undercover detective Jacob Grant during a botched drug bust. <laughs> Well, the Albuquerque Police Department says that since the shooting, they have improved undercover officer training, equipment, communication, and procedures. This week, the city settled a federal civil lawsuit with Jacob Grant for $6.5 million. The city also agreed to cover his medical expenses for the rest of his life and pay his retirement. Right now, Polk County deputies are desperately looking for two teenagers who may be using guns stolen from a deputy's cruiser. Deputies are now looking for Michael O'Neill and to carry a grave. They're accused of many crimes all across the county. That includes a string of thefts from cars and a bunch of neighborhoods. Yeah, it's great. This is the right now on the streets. They really might come back. They really, man. I've taken from the deputy's car, including his personal assault rifle, two service weapons, and a bullet vest. And now these two teams uh, they are already under arrest in this case, and they face grand theft robbery charges. They are trading on Hoppy and their plan is McKenzie. The new information tonight is the shooting at a Richmond bus station. When Clark's gunman, James Brown III, had a lengthy criminal record. Brown was charged with attempted murder in Illinois back in 2001. It's a 2012 guilty to attacking a pregnant woman. He still ground shot Trooper Chad Dermeyer at Greyhound bus stop yesterday. Two other troopers shot and killed Brown. Trooper Dermeyer later died. And Chicago Public School teachers walked off the job today. Teachers say they are protesting unfair labor practices, including, including the removal of some raises from their contracts. The move is getting sharp criticism from Governor Bruce Rahm. He slammed Chicago's teachers union, calling it his plan, one day walk up in abuse of power. Well, there is some new leadership taking over the Seattle Lake Police Department in Corpus of Missouri tonight. Former Miami Police Major Delvish Moss is now hired as police chief in the St. Louis suburb. Moss will take over the reins of a department that's been scrutinized since former officer Gary Wilson killed 18 year old Michael Brown in 2014. So, how could the VO we just watched be, have been better? Right, that would have been great to have a little bit of nat, nat pop here. What is it called? What is the offense I just made here? Lip smack. There you go. Good. Avoid lip smack. Um, she also mentioned uh, a couple other people. So we could have showed video of that. We showed, could have showed photos of that. That probably would have been a lot better than just a talking head for the entire video. A park named after well known civil rights leader celebrating its grand opening this weekend. And we have been there every step of the way as construction crews work at Perry Harvey Senior Park. It's located along Central Avenue in downtown Tampa, an area once vibrant with African American businesses. On Sunday, the mayor will reveal displays, statues, and a walk honoring that period's rich history. Even though they may not have been recognized historically, we're going to recognize them. We're going to tell that story, and it's going to be a part of our forever. The grand opening was originally planned for tomorrow, but was just moved Sunday because of rain in the forecast. The celebration runs from 2 in the afternoon until 5 o'clock. There will be live music, free food, and a bunch of entertainment. And the lady with the weather report? Yes, she really just got the latest. It's tomorrow Saturday, so people are obviously adjusting plans. As well. Right. Okay. So, um, not a perfect newscast by any means. Um, this one had a lot of crime in it. I tried to paste it a little bit. Um, 
now we're in weather right now. We're going to give Julie a VO here in a second. So she's going to look at some snow. Um, then v then Julie's going to keep going on. It's called early weather when you have a weather hit in the A block. Um, she's going to keep talking for about 45 seconds after that. Then she's going to promote a couple of things. And then um, we're going to go into a pre prod tease for the next block. Um, so this is an A block. Pretty standard. Unfortunately, lots of mug shots, lots of crime in this one. Um, so I want to show you guys a different one that's um, that's a different theme of a, of a show, because not every show is going to be like that. But that was an A block. That was pretty basic, standard. Uh, some breaking news things happened up at top, but otherwise, VOs, VOSOTs. The pacing here, you see, um, you don't want to only have VOs. There were no readers. Um, it was a, a good pacing, so you don't want to just have VOs. You had a Sotvo here, you had a Sotvo here, you had a Sotvo here. So at least it's changing the pace a little bit, but it definitely could have been better. Um, this is an example of my open script um, with the Sotvo, Sotvo, all those things. Um, let's move ahead to this one now. Um, I want to kind of show you um, what this one looks like um, because this is a different theme, but unfortunately in Florida, it's super common to have to do these hurricane newscasts. This is not a special, uh, this is just a newscast that, that happened to be about hurricanes coming in. And, and when that happens, um, it's usually a pretty big deal. So anytime you get to the coverage of, of hurricane season, know that you might blow out your whole newscast and it might all be hurricane related. So how do you do a whole newscast about weather? Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of things about this. Quick note about this rundown. There are yellow highlights on break three uh, and final weather. Um, just in case you're wondering what those are, and I'll show you this. This is what I'm talking about. If you're like, why is that highlighted in yellow? Because uh, when I did the screen grab of this rundown, that was where my timing bar was. So when you're timing a show, what really helps you back time these newscasts, so that was the A block we just watched. But now when we're going to watch a whole show, how do you time it? Um, it's important to be able to back time in your head, which means you need to know if my show ends at nine, and right now, what time is it? How much time do I have left? It's it's like not a lot of math, but it's a lot of like adding and subtracting a few seconds. So it's not like complex math, but there is quite a bit you have to keep in your head when you're back timing. So what helps is a timing bar. So inside EMPS and iNews, um, you'll have these little space, you'll hit the space bar and it'll go down to each story and it'll kind of help you keep time. How much time do you have left in your show? Are you getting heavy? Are you light? Um, it's That's what this little yellow guy is. So I just wanted to let you know in case you're looking at it like, why is there all of a sudden a highlighted line? It's the timing bar. Um, so let's take a look at, does anybody have questions about that last one before we move on to this newscast? Okay, let's take a look and let's follow along um, with this Hurricane Matthew newscast now. We're going to start, um, in this case here, A3, we're starting with a pre pro open. Um, how long is my pre pro open? About, about 41 seconds or so. Um, and now we'll follow along. Of course, A5 is floated because it was my backup open. Um, follow along with all of these things here, and then uh, we'll take a look at Ian's uh, why we floated A16 and A17 once we get there. There are hurricane warnings and watches along the entire east coast of our state. Track the storm. Watches are in effect before the Gulf Coast. This is serious. This will kill you. Do not buy it back. Are you prepared for mass casualties? Because the people do not live. Now we got 130 mile an hour wind gusts in some of our multiple places. You are going to have to tell us. Tonight, more than 2 million people in Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina are being begged to leave their homes as Hurricane Matthew races towards the southeast coast. Millions who don't evacuate are bracing to lose power when we are hit by the strongest hurricane in years. News generate at 8 begins now. So as a producer, I wrote that open. Um, what did the open script look like? What were my story forms in there? Right, it was a sound on tape from the governor, so it was a SOT, followed back to back by another SOT, then it was VO that I wrote, that I gave to the announcer and he tracked it. Um, so, so if you want to get really good at writing opens, it's a similar technique that you use to write teases, 
um, but it's it's not necessarily promising what's coming up, but kind of, it's the same concept. You really don't want to um, downplay stories in your open. You don't want to sensationalize, but you do not want to downplay, especially in a hurricane um, show, or like if you're working in California, like I worked on earthquakes, we did lots of earthquake coverage. We had a massive power outage that took out South um, California and North Mexico for a while there. Any type of big emergency that people are affected by, wildfires, things like that, you don't want to downplay in your writing. So it's important that the producers write big too so that people understand the urgency um, and then use those power words that we talk about right now, breaking news, all of those those big key power words that we talked about in our breaking news lecture. Um, so now we're coming out to A4. Uh, what are we gonna see after after they say hello? A7, after, after A7, we're on A4 now, the next is gonna be A7. What are we seeing there? A stinger, right, we're gonna see a stinger. And what's gonna happen right after the stinger? Right, it's gonna be a VO, we're gonna be talking over a live a live picture. In this case, we'll watch it here in a second, I'll stop talking. But unfortunately, in this case, they changed the camera right before we went to it, so it's like not a really good live video, <laughs> unfortunately, but that happens too, so you just go with it. Um, so we have a live video, um, and then to really give context, this is when producing really is important. You don't just wanna go on and say, hey, breaking news, there's a hurricane coming, because that's like over in five seconds. So how do you make a whole show out of it? You really give context. So we have a live picture of, first of all, what's happening now. Remember new now next? You want to start with what's the newest information, what's happening right now, and then you want to give context. Like A9, in a second, we're going to see a VO that's going to talk about death toll, people who are already killed. That's important. Then we're going to go into a SOTVO with the governor's um, newest soundbite from the governor warning people uh, what's happening. And then we're going to go into... Um, the first reporter that we have on this team coverage, and he's gonna be live out there. I was hoping Ian could get a VO and a SOT, but since he couldn't, I floated A16 and A17. Um, and then we're gonna continue with team coverage and we'll, we'll start watching, uh, watching all that here. And so we'll look at the stinger and I'll show you a little bit of a, a different type of stinger here in a second. You're looking live at Hollywood, Florida. The beaches are clearing out as dark clouds, strong rain starts to make its way up the coast. And we are watching this area of South Florida closely. The wind picked up dramatically there within just the past hour. The storm ravaged Caribbean islands, but now it is now playing for more than 100 deaths. A majority of those people who died from Haiti took a direct hit. Tonight, that death toll is expected to rise as the current hurricane hits Florida. Just 30 minutes ago, Governor Rick Scott held another news conference, stressing his warning for one and a half million people to evacuate. There are no excuses you need to leave. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Are you willing to take a chance to risk your life? Are you willing to take a gamble? That's what you're doing. If you're reluctant to back, evacuate, just think of all the people the storm has already killed. You and your family could be on these numbers if you don't take this seriously. This is the largest mandatory evacuation since Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Tonight, Governor Rick Scott is stressing his concern about Palm Beach specifically. This is the first big area in Florida expected to take a hit from Hurricane Matthew. One of our meteorologists is there tonight in Palm Beach. We also have crews all across the state bringing you team coverage of the hurricane as it. So I, I try to produce special stingers or special clips. Right now we're on A12 for every type of team coverage event. This one's more serious, so it's pretty like normal. But I've done really fun ones for like um, when we did like the Road to the Cup for the um, hurricane spe or excuse me the the lightning special. <laughs> so the lightning special that we did for the hockey team, uh, it was a really fun team coverage thing where you have everyone's pictures. So someone has to make that. So usually that's a producer who requests that from the graphic department. Um, but you have to think to ask it because no one's just going to make it for you. Um, so this is also one of the jobs for the producers to find every single one of these pictures to write out, I want Hurricane Matthew at top, then I want team coverage, then I want 
these photos. So usually that's somebody uh, like a producer. And if, if you don't do it for your show, somebody else might do it for their show. And you want to make sure that you're sharing like, hey, I made a special clip for our, our team coverage. Um, that way you guys can all share if it's the same throughout uh, the newscast that evening like it was in this case. It comes its way up the coast. Yeah, big for really, we're in between rain fans right now. We're just taking a look at the latest radar imagery. We've got another uh, band just offshore that's got a batch of big winds along with it. I'm standing in front of the intercoastal waterway now. We actually decided to leave Singer Island. We were on the beach earlier. I was reporting wind gusts up around 55 miles per hour with the eye of the storm less than 100 miles from us, due east, almost just south of due east. Offshore, the winds have really picked up through the afternoon hours. You can see the next. So I'm just going to mute this for a second so I can explain why Ian keeps talking. Um, that's another thing a reporter or a producer needs to be able to do is talk to reporters or weather people in this case because he, he got sent out of our counties um, down south. And so anytime they move, they need to tell you so the producer can update the lower third. Um, so that's important. So maybe instead of saying the specific city that he's in, perhaps I just tell people what county he's in. So you just tell me if you leave the county. Uh, so that helps a little bit when you're producing big shows like this. If you don't have to give the specific city, if you know they're moving, like with weather um, coverage, they're going to move because they need to be safe. Um, so that's just one extra tip just to give you a heads up. Farther north in Florida, the worst of the storm's impacts aren't expected to reach the Jacksonville area until tomorrow. But right now, officials are pleading with people to evacuate. Candace McCallum joins us now live in Jacksonville where the warning is Hey. Okay, so here's another way to produce a live shot. So we've seen alt boxes. Um, here's a different way. You can put them in the monitor. So the same way that we talked about putting a VO in the monitor and taking it full, you can also put a live uh, live shot in the monitor here in A23, that's where we're at, and then take it full with Candace. Um, INTH is basically the interview set with a horizontal monitor. Depending on where you work, you might have different names for things like that. The BAM is a pretty consistent name for a piece of the set, um, but the INTH is the interview set with a horizontal. There's also this monitor right here is a vertical monitor, so you might see INTV. That's just the way that WFA, WFLA did it, uh, but I just wanted to explain to you what you're seeing here um, in the rundown. So what is Candace going to do for us here in Jacksonville? What are we expecting to see out of Candace's live shot? She doesn't have a package for me, that's for sure. Usually you don't want a package if it's going to be dated. Right, she's going to do a VO in A25, and then she also has a SOT in A26. Um, and then she's going to come out on the back end, and she's going to do double boxes with a Q&A. Uh, that's what's planned, at least. You get out now, you still have some time. So, Candace, are people eating that warning? Oh, rest be surprised, obviously, a lot of people not eating that warning. Right now, we're seeing a break in the rain, but they're warning people don't fall for the head shake right now. The mayor of Jacksonville telling people that they still have room in their shelters. Also telling people, if you decide to stay in places like where we are in Jacksonville Beach, let somebody know where you are so that when search and rescue teams have to come out after the storm, they know exactly where to go. Because if you take a look at the sign behind me, they are under an evacuation order out here on Jacksonville Beach. Now, we were out here earlier today when we got to video, and it started much earlier today when they were boarding up businesses and closing things down. And we also found people who live in the area trying to move their belongings to higher ground, and some homeowners boarding up and trying to protect their homes, some making the late decision to not ride it out. I think that we've got everything, like at least four feet off the ground. So, uh, whenever we come back, we've tagged up the photos, we've taken valuables, uh, we've worked, and we got it. Surprise, this is live news. Okay, so that happens all the time. We were planning on having a double box with a Q&A, um, and it just didn't happen. A lot of times with weather, what happens is um, because things are going crazy, there's storms, um, it does affect your live shots, uh, whether you're doing a satellite live shot, microwave, or you're doing a TV view, a live view. Remember that lecture we had about what TV views and live views are? It's basically cellular 
um, data that you're using to, to do your live shot. And that's oftentimes what you're doing in these areas because um, parking a live truck can be a little dangerous, um, especially if it's lightning out. Um, so it's important for um, anchors to react immediately. Like you shouldn't have to wait for your um, like producer. If you see it cuts to you and you're on a one shot, then you add Libstar. There's obviously technical difficulties that happen. So and you explain it and then you keep moving forward. Um, so as an anchor, it's important to be able to roll with the punches too. Um, and, and sometimes you are communicating with your anchor at the time as a producer, but um, it's nice to get to the point where you trust your anchors and they know that you want them to just take the lead and go. Um, other times, if they're, you're in a sound bite, you can get in their ear and explain, hey, we lost Candace. Um, we're going to just go to you and then tell them that we lost her. But we didn't know until right when we came back to her and she was frozen. Super common in TV news. Um, so now we're going to go into um, a, this is a three shot because there's three people on on this on the screen here. Um, we're going to go to Jen or Julie, excuse me, really quickly. Um, she's going to have a, a two minute weather hit. Then we're going to continue on with a promotional um clip here we're kind of going to scroll past weather to download our app that's important during these times because people will oftentimes lose um their cable so you want to make sure that people know that they can still get information on their cell phone um and so this is a32 uh now what are we going to see here in a34 Right, a Vosat bow. So Jen is going to read a Vosat bow um, and then follow along with the rest of these and pay attention to how do you keep talking about weather? Like, how do you, what are the stories that you do when uh, when you have to do an all weather show? So every time you do this, you're going to have the same stories. You're going to have gas shortages. You're going to have evacuation routes. This is a pattern that once you produce enough, you realize you can anticipate all these stories. You can start looking at for these stories. So an assignment editor or producer, executive producer can tell their staff, like their photographers, go to the gas stations. We know that's going to be a problem because when there's big things and there's evacuation orders, you know people are going to be filling up gas and you know there's going to be a shortage. So you can anticipate, which is part of a producer's job. You should be anticipating things like this. You should be rolling on cameras that you can get for free. Um, through uh, depending on what state you work in, uh, depending on if it's through like the highway patrol or traffic, you might get different type of live shots that you can just record and use. Um, you know ahead of time you can do that as a producer, so you set that up. You know that this is the only way out. This happens every time. Um, and so then airports are going to close. That's another super common thing that's going to happen. Then we're going to have a story about schools closing. So these are the same patterns that are going to happen every time. So it's e it gets easier as a producer the more you do it because you can anticipate things that are coming up here. Um, now I want to kind of skip ahead a little bit uh, to the pre-produced um, tease so that you can see uh, after this Vosatvo, you can see how we tease into the B block. Um, and then we're going to wrap it up here and pick it up um, after this uh, after this tease. When you close schools, you're impacting families and you're impacting childcare. You're impacting parents' ability to work uh, or find care for the children. Extracurricular activities like football on our Friday night football are going to be determined by a case by case basis. So you'll want to check with your school's social media accounts. So now we're 8.45. Our
Okay, and that's all we have time for now. Keep watching this. That was a tease to the price gouging, which is also very common uh, when you do weather coverage. So watch the rest of this um, so that you kind of get an idea of what's happening over here. You know what red means now. So watch that, and then next time we come back, we're going to pick up um, over here on, on this newscast. So let me know if you have any other questions.